Hi everybody, let's, uh, let's begin. And, uh, I just want to welcome you to this panel. Uh, this is a panel that, another one of the panels I've been really looking forward to having um, because it features uh, immigrant workers uh, and an immigrant <coughs> worker and an activist uh, on the panel speaking to the issue of uh, you know, the conditions that immigrant workers face here in, in Minnesota uh, and the struggles for social justice that they're involved in. Uh, and really, uh, while all of us who like to think that because we've read a lot of books, we're very able to speak to such matters very eloquently, the fact of the matter is uh, persons who have been, uh, as it were, going through these experiences and living them uh, as not only victims, but actually as uh, agents of social and political change, uh, are far more eloquent uh, in their ability to convey to us uh, you know, those real lives and real life conditions of immigrant workers today and you know, what, they're, what they're doing collectively address their particular issues. Um, today we have with us uh, three persons. We have, uh, beginning with Tanya Cortez, who is a, a former Chipotle worker uh, who's been involved in the struggle for justice for Chipotle workers who have been subjected to what are known as silent raids, and I'll leave it to the guests to explain the concept of silent raids. Um, Brian Payne is with an organization called C-Tool, uh, And finally, uh, and Brian is an organizer, and he'll also be facilitating or a translation today. Uh, and then finally, Rafael Moritaya is an organizer with the uh, Service Employees and Industrial Union. Uh, Rafael, am I correct that you were once also president or, or, or have you always been an organizer? Yeah, I'm an organizer. Okay. I'm pretty much the only person in the Yes. The SEIU Local 26 in Minneapolis. And SEIU of all the has been very actively involved in dealing with workers who are facing the problem of silent raids. And in the case of uh, SEIU, but particularly, uh, this is a re reference to the struggles of the ABM workers, maintenance workers, Harvard maintenance workers, and they've also been involved in supporting the efforts of COVID workers to gain, uh, as it were, uh, either their jobs back or some measure of uh, you know, just compensation for their losses. Uh, in any event, have, uh, with that in mind, then I'll simply hand this uh, over to the people who are going to be leading this panel. Uh, I believe we're going to begin with Tanya. Is that correct? Or? Okay. I'm just going to start just to talk a little bit about what the silent rates are. My name is Brian Payne. I work at an organization called the Centro de Trabajadores Unidos en Lucha, the Center of Workers United in Struggle. Um, so how many people here actually know what an I-9 audit is? Maybe make sure of hands. Just a, just a couple of people. So um, how many people, right, there's a movie on about Postville that people are going to be watching. How many people know about like the raids that happened out in Postville and Wilmer and, and those big immigration raids that happened? Some people. So. Um, so under the Bush administration, um, the, there was a growing number of immigration raids. So immigration was very proactive in terms of going to um, workplaces in a very military style of going into workplaces and uh, picking up people who were undocumented and deporting them. So a, a very military style raid. When, I think when you I haven't actually seen the movie with Postville, but I've heard numerous times about how helicopters came in, people dressed in bulletproof vests came like, marching into it and detained everybody, um, it put them into detention centers and then physically deported people. These types of raids were becoming more and more common under the Bush administration and more and more frequent, and they were very spectacular raids that were gradually becoming bigger and bigger and really significant human tragedy that came together with those raids. Under the Obama administration, um, there's a general feeling that, oh, well, the, the Obama administration is much better when it comes to immigration. The fact is um, the numbers of deportations under the Obama administration has actually gone up pretty significantly. More people are being deported today per year than were under the Bush administration. 
the very aggressive style raids, like what happened in Postville, aren't happening anymore. But they're doing a new type of silent raid. It's called an I-9 audit. So an I-9 audit, instead of actually going in and physically um, raiding in a military style raid a workplace, with an I-9 audit, uh, ICE will go into a company and get the um, names and social security numbers of all of the workers all the I-9 forms, essentially, of all the workers who work at a company. They specifically target companies where they think there's going to be a high number of undocumented workers. So um, often in meatpacking and cleaning and hotels, um, in, in places where they think that there's going to be a high number of undocumented workers. Then they will go through that list and see how many people, um, if their names and social security numbers don't match. Then they give a list to the employer and tell the employer, you have to talk to these workers, and if the workers can't straighten out the discrepancy, then they have to be fired. So it's a new type of raid with the same consequence of people losing their jobs. And under the Obama administration, these I-9 audits have gone up significantly. There's uh, become an increasing number of, um, of these I-9 audits since the Obama administration um, has taken over doing these types of enforcing immigration. Um, so what happens? With there, there used to be a common thing around no-match letters. Um, workers will get a no-match letter from Social Security that says your name and your Social Security number don't match. There's tons and tons of reasons why your name and Social Security number might not match. In fact, there's over 20 million errors in the database. The best estimates that people have come up with is that there's maybe 10, 11 million undocumented workers. So about 50% of the errors are actually pe for people who ha are legally allowed to work in the United States. So a no match issue between your name and number doesn't mean that you're not legally allowed to work. Uh, what it means is that your name and your social security don't match. So for example, when a woman gets married, if she, when she changes her last name, if she hasn't gone to the Social Security Administration to be able to correct all of the paperwork, suddenly your name and number don't match. It doesn't mean that you're undocumented, it just means that it doesn't match. That's the problem with these I-9 audits. Immigration will come in and look at those names and numbers and suddenly hand a huge list to the employer, and the employer just automatically assumes all of those people are undocumented and just starts firing everybody without providing an opportunity to be able to actually prove whether they're whether they're legally allowed to work and they're they're using it as an excuse to be able to exploit workers more and put workers into more exploitable and fearful working conditions. So that's a little bit of a background on what the I-9 audits are. And then I think uh, the two folks here we're going to talk about two experiences of what have happened with I-9 audits.